Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So welcome everyone to our sixth Immigrants Rising webinar. Um, today we're gonna be talking about business plans. Um, today we have guest presenters Arturo Noriega and Aldo Felix from Centro Community Partners. So um, they'll get an opportunity to talk about Centro and will also guide us through a business plan using their app. But before we get started, let's see. Okay. Um, I do want to give, again, a brief overview of um, Immigrants Rising. Um, this is an initiative to promote entrepreneurship opportunities for all immigrants, regardless of legal status. Um, as you can see, we've done a few webinars before. So we started off with um, Introduction to Working for Yourself, ITINS, um, EIN's Taxes. We've done another one on Choosing a Business Structure. We've done Building cr um, Credit and Getting Access to Financial Capital. Uh, we've done immigration remedies through entrepreneurship, and the sixth one is developing a business plan. All of the webinars have been recorded. They come with a handout. Um, I'm more than happy to share a link to anybody who's interested in viewing the previous webinars. We are also getting ready to launch our website that will also include the webinar recordings as well as the handouts. It's set to launch at the end of the week, so please be on the lookout um, for that announcement. Oh gosh, let's see. Sorry about that. I'm trying to navigate here. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to give a little bit of an introduction um, about our presenter. So um, I'll start with Arturo. If you could wave Arturo. <laughs> There. So um, Arturo has more than 20 years of work experience as a management consultant specializing in economic development, strategy, governance, risk management, finance, and organizational change management. He has earned an MBA in strategic management and leadership from uh, the Peter Drucker School of Management at Claremont Graduate University and the BN Economics, as well as a concentration in finance from the Haas School of Business of UC Berkeley. We also have Naldo with us today. Uh, Naldo is responsible for developing Centro's operational capacities, leading the organization's advisory services, and overseeing product development. He brings 14 years of business strategy and product development experience in technology, banking, retail, and education. Naldo has a BA from the University of San Francisco and an MBA from IE Business School in Madrid, Spain. So with that, we're gonna go ahead so I'm going to provide a brief overview of an introduction to business plans and then we're going to hand it over to our presenters. So um, we get a lot of questions about what is a business plan. So basically what a business plan, um, it defines the type of business you want and uh, you want to provide and identifies your goals. It also describes the products and services you want to sell, also discusses the clients to whom you will sell and marketing activities needed to reach each customer. It's also intended to forecast your estimated cost for your work and effort. This is very important when seeking financial support for any given business. Um, lastly, it provides the roadmap for your company um, intended to, um, to take to grow. So why are business plans important? So the main purpose of a business plan is to force you to think critically about all aspects of starting a business. So the business plan is a reflection of your business or idea, concept, project, and your ability to organize, manage, and communicate that idea or concept. The business plan provides the basis for your financial position that is required to acquire startup capital and expand your business. Um, here are um, just some of the um, sections that are typically in a business plan. So it starts off with an executive summary, vision and mission of the whatever project businesses you're interested in doing, um, some market analysis, operations, uh, service or product line, marketing, and financial projections. These are really just very general um, sections of a business plan. Some may have more, some may have um, uh, fewer sections. And so, but this is just intended to give you a very general basic overview of what it is that we're talking about today. There are also other business tools that you can use to help you create a business, uh, a business plan. There's a business model canvas, and I'll let you, I'll actually, um, I'm gonna create a handout that's gonna have links to all these different uh, resources so you can um, check out some of these resources on your own. Uh, the, these two basic business tools are really intended to um, sort of give you a validation of the specific project or business you wanna go into before actually launching it. So um, I'll definitely let you, um, on your own, um, explore some of these other options. 
And with this brief introduction, I'm going to hand it over to our presenters. And let me see if I can do this because, okay. Okay, let me see what happened to my dashboard. Okay, let's see. Sorry about that, having some technical difficulties figuring this out. Okay. After all, I'll just go ahead and just um, click next for you um, whenever you're ready, unless you can control my screen. Oh, and you're on mute, Arturo. No, we still can't hear you, huh? Hi, how about now? Can you hear me now? Perfect. Yes, we can hear you. Fantastic. Uh, I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, and thank you so much for hosting this webinar, Ileana. We are really, um, really happy to be here and really looking forward to trying to show you how we approach business planning, business plans, and, and talk a little bit about what Central Community Partners is all about. So we are, uh, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Thank you. We're a nonprofit based out of Oakland, California. We started back in 2010 with the sole purpose of helping underserved people educate them on entrepreneurship, access to capital, and mentorship so that they could start and grow their small businesses. We work with uh, all sorts of low-income people from the underserved communities. But our primary goal is entrepreneurship education and helping them write business plans. But we also do uh, development on technology and mobile apps, which I'll get to in, in a couple of slides. Go ahead, next one. We've been able to focus and the reason we focus on low-income women, minorities, LGBT uh, veterans, and disabled entrepreneurs is because this is the area of the market that get the least amount of attention. We really want to be able to, to bring the type of services and educational access and access to capital to those who really, really, really need it. Because at the end of the day, they are the backbone of our economy. Uh, everybody that has an, on, um, an entrepreneurship dream should have access to these tools and to the people to help them so that they grow and provide for their families. So we serve this market uh, solely. We don't, we don't focus on any other markets or any other segments. But this, this is our people. This is our community. And that's what we bring. We, we serve throughout California. Right now we have workshops in Los Angeles, Oakland, San Francisco, Stockton, and San Jose area, soon to come to the Central Valley. And, but we're, we work with different organizations and in partnership with other nonprofits that use our, both our technology and our curriculum in order to help them move their entrepreneurs forward in a much greater way to, so that they can impact and have access to the tools. Go ahead, next slide. Our services, <clears throat> is based around the use of a, a mobile tool. So something that you can download on your phone. Um, we provide basic entrepreneurship training. If you were to come to us with a business concept, then you would be able to enter our class. We ask you to download the, the, applica the application, the app that we, that we created. And in it, um, Nala will actually is gonna go through a demo and, and show you the, the way we, you could actually start building your business plan right on your phone. And around that application, we created a curriculum that allows you to answer questions in much more detail after you go through the app. And you can work with a partner in, in the classroom, and it's you and other entrepreneurs in a small cohort of less than 10 people, up to 10. And we get you to think about how to redefine your business, how to redefine your business model, what do you need for capital. Some people come with big, big ideas, and we want to make sure that they know all the steps necessary to get your big idea 
into a, a more um, realistic format so that they actually they could actually realize it and and be able to create new jobs in their community. So as you can see from this uh, example, we have a triangle that shows that you start with the business concept, you go to a basic training program, we give you the basics on what entrepreneurship is, you'll learn business, co business concepts, financial concepts, marketing, um, and strategy, and then we'll also teach you about financial literacy. How do you separate your personal, your personal financials from your business financials? And we start looking at what your financial position is before you start writing, starting your business because we got to get you on firm, solid footing by having a savings account and working with uh, any debt you might have in order for you to get your dreams going. Then once you complete that and after some months or maybe a little bit of time, you could enter the advanced program, which we only teach in Oakland. But we're looking at ways of how we can work with other partners to bring the advanced program into other areas. Right now, the basic training is nine weeks and the advanced training is 14 weeks. And in our advanced training, we partner the entrepreneur with an MBA student as a volunteer and the volunteer MBA advisor provides anywhere from 80 to 100 hours of one-on-one -on -one advising to the entrepreneur. So that, that model seems to be working very well. And we get those, um, we help the entrepreneurs reach about $100,000 in sales in about three years or so. Some track a little faster, some go a little slower, but that is the overall goal if you enter the advanced program. And then we help you get access to capital, and you'll see that on the slide. And we use different means to get to access to capital. That might be from a, a no interest, crowdfunded uh, loan from a Kiva organization, which is a, another nonprofit that provides that, that avenue. Or you might receive it from another community bank, which is a nonprofit financial institution that is that is that are created to help uh, low-income people with startup capital and they're called microloans up to fifty thousand dollars and so we help our entrepreneurs get access to that and you can get access to one of those products through the mobile app we'll show you today next slide thank you one of the biggest things that we focus on at Centro is how, how we innovate our, our education, how do we ask the right questions, and how to create a business plan right at your fingertips. We noticed that in the marketplace, uh, underserved entrepreneurs are all over. They're, not, they're all over the California, they're all over the United States, and sometimes they're in rural areas and urban areas. So how can we get them a standardized tool that helps them organize their ideas, puts, uh, helps them create critical thinking skills, helps them organize their financials, and allows them to access capital all in one. And so what, that's what we're gonna show you today. We call it the Central Business Planning App, which gives entrepreneurs that access to those planning tools and capital. Go ahead, next one. Slide, please. Great, and so here's a bit of a preview You'll see this logo, you can download this app for free and we'll talk about how to download it. And these are, are the initial start screens that you'll see when you do download it and, and Naldo will actually show you this. I think it's coming up, the demo. So let's get started. And if you have any questions, please, please write your questions on the chat and we, we'll be sure to, to, oh, that's, go, go back to the, uh, to the next one. But if people wanna download it or look for it now, it's called the Central Business Planning App. Yeah, you could put it there for a minute, and then you can hand it over to Naldo. So if you want to look at it, it's free to download on their iTunes and Google Play, so that you can get get that into your phone now. And then we'll we continue. We'll come back to this slide afterwards. So let's go ahead and get started with the demo. And you're gonna remotely give it to Naldo. Correct. Okay. And Naldo, um, you're up. Uh, there you go. Okay, I think we're here. <laughs> um, sorry, we're in the same office and we're, we're fiddling with who should be muted and who should not. Um, and I see some messages on chat, so I wanted to see, oh, 
Okay, people downloading. Great. Um, so thank you, Ilana. Thank and thank you for sending Ilana. Thank you for sending the um, the link to everyone so they could download it and get started. Um, as Arturo was saying, this is an app that's been designed specifically for um, people that are new to building a business plan. Um, so the activities are very simple. Um, the language is simple. The process is meant to be a step-by-step -step process that people can do from anywhere uh, using their mobile device. Um, actually, when we were doing research, we, we, we found out that most entrepreneurs, uh, especially underserved entrepreneurs, are more likely to have access to a smartphone or mobile device than a computer with internet. And so that's one of the main reasons we decided to build a, an app. Um, and these are all, you'll see here that we have mission, vision, values, personal finance, market analysis, product services, operations, and business finance. These are all topics that we cover in our in-person workshops. And little by little, we discovered um, what pre-class or pre-workshop activities would be useful for, um, for individuals to do on their own so that when they did come in and speak with a business coach or come into a workshop, they had already done some of the thinking. And as we assembled all of these activities, we saw that magically they came together to build the outline of an entrepreneur's very first business plan. Um, so the architecture here of what you see on the screen, at the very top there's a, um, there's a message that says, that says, send me my business plan. At the very end, I'll show you what that looks like, but that's how you request the business plan to be sent automatically. Um, then we have those six categories, and we'll see those in just a second. At the very bottom, there's a button to apply for a loan, and that takes people to apply for a Kiva loan. Um, and so, without any delay, um, this is what we look at in mission, vision, values. Um, what we'll do is we'll ask people to start with the very first activity, which is personal values. And here we simply ask the entrepreneurs to select eight values that resonate with them. Once to do that, then we ask them to pick one of the two that is more important to them. So creativity or community. I'll say community, adventure or dignity. Um, let's say venture, uh, compassion, freedom. We do this seven times and at the end we have a ranked list of personal values. And if there's something that maybe needs to be fine-tuned, that can be done. Um, but very quickly, they have, um, you've identified your personal values. Uh, now, I mentioned that this is something that we use, uh, it's been designed for entrepreneurs to use on their mobile devices. There are really two types of entrepreneurs that will use this. Uh, entrepreneurs that are working on their own, and they find the app through the app store or through word of mouth. And then there are some that find us that they're working, they're using our curriculum through one of our partners. Um, and, and so one of the things that, that we spoke about in preparing this webinar was to help articulate some of the, the questions that we ask ourselves and, and we train our, our facilitators, our coaches to ask the entrepreneurs in a workshop. We thought we'd bring some of those questions to you. Um, so I actually have our workbook here. <laughs> so I'll be referring to it so that I can, I can I'll bring to you some of the questions that we ask as you do these activities. These are questions that you can reflect on um, on your own. So with personal values, um, you know, once we have this list of personal values, then we'd ask, uh, you know, are, are there any additional values that maybe aren't on the li this list? This, is, this came from a universal list of personal values, um, but there might be some unique values that you might want to include. Um, you know, thinking about why these values are important to you. Um, how did you develop these, these values? And how do these values um, affect the way that, that you live your life? Um, now, when we go into vision, here we simply ask three purpose questions. Um, so here, in an ideal world, what would your business stand for? Um, how will your business improve its customers' lives? And the last one is, how will your business impact the world? This is almost the most typing that you'll need to do into the app. Um, but from here, we'll ask which of these, these messages best fits your business. Um, we'll just select the top one here. And this isn't final, but this is an initial vision. Um, you know, from here, we would ask the entrepreneurs to go into smaller groups and you know, ask, does it describe a specific goal? Will it help with decision making? Is it realistic? 
Will it motivate employees? And is it clear and concise? And so from that, you know, this, this initial vision statement can be drastically improved, but the app helps create that very first version. Um, when we look at, at the mission, here we simply show what the vision is and ask, what do you need to do to achieve that vision? You type that out and you have an initial mission statement. And so here again, you know, we have some follow-on questions. Does it describe a specific, specific activities? Um, does the business per perform these activities on a regular basis? Um, are these activities critical to achieving the vision? And then again, is it clear and concise? I will say it looks good here. Um, shared values, this is where the technology becomes pretty interesting because we can show the mission and vision. And we know that for small business entrepreneurs, the personal values are very much aligned with the shared or business values. And so here we'll show the top personal value and ask, is this in alignment? And we'll say yes or no. Um, and at the end, we have a ranked list of shared values. And so again, here we do have additional questions that, that are wonderful for discussion. You know, how do these values reinforce your vision, your mission? Uh, how do they guide decision making? Uh, how do they impact the relationships with customers, with partners? Um, do they impact the employees that you recruit? Uh, and also do any of them contradict one another? We've looked at mission, vision, values, and here quite quickly, I mean, we've sped through, um, but quite quickly you can come up with your initial vision, mission, and shared values. Um, so I'll show a couple additional activities so you can get a sense of um, how the app works. Um, here within personal finance, here we'll look at, we'll ask, what do you spend money on? Do you spend money on rent? We'll say yes. How about insurance? We'll say yes again. Um, just for simplicity, I'll say no for the rest of these. Um, but we have quite a few costs here. There we go. And then for everything you say yes, how much do you spend on that? And you can put it in per day, per week, per month, or per year. And quite quickly, we have the average monthly costs. On the income side, we do the same thing. How much do you, um, where do you get money from? Is it from a job? Yes, a second job, maybe not. Uh, government assistance, alimony, investments, other. And then is there anyone else in your household? And then here we'll ask how much, is, how much do you make from your job? Per day, work, per week, per month, per year. And there you have your, your personal income. And then you click on personal uh, income statement and we can see a simplified personal income statement. Um, I think I'll show one more example here. In market analysis, um, if we look at customer analysis, here we ask standard questions that, that most of you will know. And, and if you don't, these are good questions to, to really uncover. And so to interview customers, to do research, uh, but we look at, you know, how old are your customers? And so you'll put in an age range. And then we'll ask, are they male or female? And you can slide this back and forth. Um, the income level. So how much money do the, your customers earn? And then we look at education. What sort of education level do they have? Uh, what occupation? Their hobbies? And then we look at where they're located. Are, are they within walking distance? Are they online? And then from here, we'll randomly pull from those ranges and we'll ask, is this, does this sound like one of your customers? And so here we have Kylie, who's 42. She has a college education, makes 43,000 a year and um, lives a long drive from the business. Well, let's say yes. And then here we have Fredo, who's 41, college, 66,000 a year, it sounds reasonable. And Aylin, let's say no, maybe. And let's say yes to Adam. So we have very quickly assembled the three sample customer profiles. Now, that's, that's great. 
Um, and that's a great first step. Um, when we have our entrepreneurs working together in a workshop setting, then we'll look at, you know, after doing this, this activity, then we'll ask the entrepreneurs to meet in groups and, and talk about the, the character, characteristics that were identified in the customer analysis in this activity um, and think about what other factors the business might want to consider when describing its, its target customer. Um, we look at further understanding the, the customer. So what are the characteristics that most of the customers have in common? Um, why do these customers buy from your business instead of from, from the competitors? And then we also include um, a paragraph describing the, the customer. So going beyond these very simple customer profiles, what is it, makes, what is it that makes your customer unique? Um, and then we also, we, we then meet in groups, we talk about what is it that the customers get when they buy from your business? Um, what's the expectation? Why might they not buy from you? And what is it that you could do to get the reaction of, wow, this is amazing. Um, so that, that's how we approach the, the customer profile on the app, um, the customer analysis. So we, we basically do this through the entire app. One additional piece that we added quite recently is within business finance at the very bottom, we have projections. And so this is one of the big challenges that many of the entrepreneurs we work with have, and that is coming up with the monthly projections. And so the, the initial activities that lead up to this are very similar to what you saw in the personal finance section. Um, but I'll walk you through what the uh, sales projections look like. So if we look at sales projections for July, um, here we'll look at, we see the average expected sales. And so this came from a previous activity. Um, and so we'll say, we ask, are there any of these sales that you expect to change? Um, and let's say, let's say it's really warm. And so we think that beer, aguas, and soda will increase. We go here and we'll say, well, we think the, um, instead of 850, we're gonna, we expect to sell 900. And then here for beer, let's say that here we expect 1,200. And for soda, let's say that we expect, um, let's say 650. We hit continue. And there are the adjusted, the adjusted sales projections already entered. Then we go here to costs and it's similar. You know, what are the costs that you expect to change? You would change that and then hit continue. And then we look at extras and extras. Those are what investments do you expect to make or will you be selling any of your capital equipment? Um, and so this helps you identify the, the trajectory of sales, of projections, of sales of expenses and what you might need to purchase in the future. So once we come back here, if we touch here at the top, send me my business plan, here you simply confirm your email address, hit send, and we automatically send you your business plan. And so I will, I will share a different window right now. Give me one second. And so now what we're looking at is a sample business plan. So this is generated through the app. Um, we haven't done any, any sorts of adjustments. Um, and let me go a little bit bigger here. Um, so we start by having a, um, a cover sheet that basically says the information here is as accurate as you've put into the app. Um, there might be some, in, some incomplete activities and we'll list them. And we encourage you to come back and update it and re-request your business plan. Um, but moving on to the business plan outline, this is your very first business plan. So we have everything that's necessary in the introduction, the vision, the mission, uh, a look at the values, uh, a description of the business. Um, when we look at the market analysis, 
here we have, um, you'll see some of the information that we've entered through the app. So here, for example, we said that the, the customers are between 15 and 60. That comes out here in real print, um, in real life, in paragraph and sentence form. Um, as we continue look, going down, we have the sample customer profiles. We have an overview of the competitors, um, the value proposition, the price list. Uh, we look at the operations, the team. And at the bottom, we have the business finance. So this, these are the projections that were done through the app that magically appear in, in a table format. So we have the projected monthly income statement as well as the projected balance sheet. And then at the very end, we also include you know, the, uh, the personal finances that were entered through the app. Okay. Um, this comes as an RTF document, um, which is essentially a Word document. So this can be opened in an editor and it can be adjusted however, however you want um, and used for whatever purposes. I will reshare my, my screen right now and let me plug in my computer. One second. So back on the app, um, if we touch here at the very bottom, we have apply for a loan. This takes people to the process for applying for a Kiva loan. As Arturo mentioned earlier, this is an interest-free crowdfunded loan. And these are loans of up to $10,000. And so the, you know, for us, going through the process of building your business plan through the app is enough to alleviate the, the concern that you might not be um, a good fit. But going through this process means that you started evaluating your business model, and that makes us happy. Um, so if we hit yes, tell me more. Here we just summarize, again, the qualifications for a Kiva loan. Um, once you review that, then we touch here again at the bottom. We enter the first name, business name, first name, last name, business name, email, and phone number. Hit the bot option at the very bottom, which is missing information. And that basically initiates the Kiva loan process. Okay. Um, so I, I wanted to mention a couple of things that just summarizing the, the app itself. Um, as I mentioned, this is a super simple way to, to build a business plan. Um, it's a step-by-step -step approach. Um, and it's great for people that are maybe struggling to put pen to paper um, and, and get that first business plan done. Um, it's, it's free. It's available on Android and Apple devices. It comes in English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Russian. Um, and... And one thing that was interesting, we went back to some of our, some of the people that use the app. We did a survey of people that had completed the app and we discovered that over 80% reported that they were increasing their revenue and 80, over 80% were decreasing their costs. Um, and we saw that 42% said that they were in, um, creating jobs. And those are all indicators that we look at when, um, as a nonprofit, we're looking at an impact and, and that makes us very happy. Um, and yeah, as Arturo was mentioning before, we have, uh, the app is, is available for everybody. The workshops we have going on through partners in Southern California, um, the San Francisco Bay Area, and Stockton. And it's also available in other parts of, uh, of the U.S. and of the world. So I know mostly we have uh, entrepreneurs on, on this webinar. Um, if anybody has questions, concerns, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, and also we have programs for organizations and institutions that want to replicate, want to create their own um, entrepreneurship training programs in their own communities. Uh, so we're happy to work with, with all of you. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know if Arturo has anything else he wants to add. He's right next to me. Yeah, thank you very much, Salo. Excellent. And um, I think we'd uh, probably a good point to start, start talking about some of the questions or addressing some of the questions. As you can see, this makes it a lot easier to put your ideas down and do it at your convenience. You don't need a computer. You can just start doing it right on your phone. It is for free. Um, are there some questions from the from anybody? 
please go ahead and uh, let us know and we can start addressing them. Uh, Ileana, any uh, questions you might have for seeing this demo again? <laughs> Um, let's see. Well, some of the questions we've had before. Um, Ileana, we, I cannot hear you. I can't hear you. You can't oh. hear me. Oh. Actually, uh, okay. 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 Will you turn your volume off? Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. There I am. Okay. okay. Lower. Lower. Um, uh, so what we uh, as you as know, you know uh, many of our uh, audience, audience members, members may not necessarily, may not necessarily have, have legal immigration uh, status. Can you talk a little bit about, about um, you know, if there, there are anybody with immigration, immigration, immigration status that they use this app? app? Is there anything yeah. they should be aware of? Yeah, happy to answer that. Um, I hear people reporting that there's an echo. Is there still an echo? Oh, I think there is. Can you put yours on mute? Oh, um, okay. okay. Is that is that better for everybody? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, the the app works for everybody. Um, it's it's not important to us about immigration status. We want this education and this knowledge to be spread spread wide, um, and we want to help people. Um, one of the ways that we approach um, I don't want to say this. We, we do a great job of asking the standard questions that all entrepreneurs are asking themselves as they build their businesses. Um, we train our trainers on the ground, our facilitators, our business coaches on how to lead their own workshops. And that's where you know, the, the context of, um, of the environment is, is much more relevant. And so that comes, that includes everything from, um, demographics, legal status, business entities, uh, taxes. So there's a lot that, that we can do that's standard. Um, but one of the big reasons that we created the, the workbook for our, our partners um, and workshops around the US is so that we can address those, uh, or, or those concerns can be addressed um, in, uh, in person, in those communities. Great, great. Thank, thank you. you. So, so now, now it, oh, I can I can hear an echo on myself. So I apologize for that. But uh, if anybody has any questions, um, now is the time to um, start writing some of your questions either in the Q and A or in the chat section. And I am going to switch back to sharing our contact information. Let's see. Okay, so we're going to share this one. Okay, so here is the contact information uh, for me if you have any questions for me. We also have uh, contact information for Arturo up there. Um, so let's see, I do see that we have a question that came in. So. Um, can you please post the name of the app again? Sure. So let me actually scroll back to that. So here is how to download again the app and what to search for. Um, so we'll keep that slide open. So now another question that came in, um, and Nalo and Arturo, uh, feel free to chime in. Do these plans need to vary depending on the type of business model, for instance, LLC or co-op? So thank you. Nice question. Um, in general, the, there's, there are things that, that will make business plans unique depending on the model. Um, but at the same time, a lot of these are, are standard questions. So we work, for example, with an organization that does workshops for people looking to create their own co-ops. Um, and they use our workshop. They use our, our workshop, they use our, the business planning app, and they just augment it with some content that is specific to a certain topic or a certain industry. Um, we have some organizations that focus on food related businesses. And so they'll naturally want to focus, you know, augment the business planning app and curriculum with some material for them. Um, 
I, I see a question in the chat about the, uh, the cost for the nine week program. Um, it depends on where you are and who the partner is. Um, we provide them with the resources um, and we, we make recommendations for how to run it, but it's up to them and up to how they receive their funding to determine what that cost is. But usually the cost is, is uh, no more than $100. Um, I haven't seen any of ours, any of our basic training workshops um, for, for more than that. And I'm told on average 60. Um, and then the advanced program, that's up here in the Bay Area. And that is $500 on a sliding scale. The, um, but that includes the, the 36 hours of workshop training, as well as all of the, the support from a volunteer MBA student um, to build or rebuild that business model, do the financials, um, and really be a partner on that, on that effort. Good question. Any other questions? If any of you got an opportunity to download the app and scroll through it, are there any questions as you're scrolling through um, the app? Feel free to write those in here. Um, I also thought maybe it makes sense to mention some of our workshops are, are in Spanish. Um, so mm -hmm. we do the, the basic training workshop, we'll do it um, in English, Spanish, and we, also, we have uh, a couple that have done them in Portuguese too. Um, and it just depends on the partner and, and the location. Um, they're from all over the country, right? The, the audience. They can hear your job. Yes. I, uh, I, do you want to call me? Call me? I have a question for the audience as to where are some of the, ten, well, the some of the cities that you're located in? Uh, I'm curious because perhaps there's also partners that were, we're also working in other states, just really at the beginning of that process and looking to work with more partners in other states. I'm just curious where, what cities uh, is some of the audience today located? If they're not, uh, okay, great. Yeah, Fresno, Davis. Can you, can you un the volume higher? Arlington. Oh, fantastic. And yeah, we'd love to come out to uh, Fresno. Um, Davis is close to Stockton. We're, we're working in Sacramento, um, Los Angeles, Arlington. We'll be out to Washington soon, too. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. One but, in Boston. And one in Boston. Um, yeah, we want to continue seeing how we can serve and create these programs in your local city. So it's good to know where the demand is. So that, that this is very helpful. If you uh, if you want to stay in contact, please let let us know and get, send us an email and say hello. And uh, we'll try to find you resources in your city because it's most likely we know people there already. So uh, we'd love to do that. Any other questions, comments for our panelists today? Um, you're more than, uh, you, uh, you are more than, uh, you can also ask us questions about anything from the free previous webinars as well. So here we go, we have a few, will this webinar be recorded? Yes, the webinar will be recorded and we will be sending the link to the recording of this webinar as well as the others um, to anyone who registered um, for this webinar. And we have another question here. Um, what would you tell someone that does not know where to begin about what type of business to start? That's a great question. We, we get some of those questions in the basic program. And what we start doing is, the first place to start is the assessment of yourself. So what skill sets do you have to offer? Usually we find talent in, in everybody, everybody has talent. And we start looking at, are you able to make something? Have you created something? Uh, then we start looking at what, what need, what's the problem you're trying to solve in your own community can, that you think you can address? Because businesses are, are about problem, solving certain problems, either for, in terms of products and or services. So the best place to start is, what are you really good at? And what are some of the 
some of the issues or challenges you feel like you can address with your own immediate community, just around your neighborhood. Um, that's usually the best place to start and start talking to people. If they identify the same problems that you're identifying that you would like to take on. And that is very much uh, how people get started. So if you're a great uh, maker of food and a particular type of food, we work with all kinds of food products. In fact, 50%, more than 50% of our entrepreneurs is a, a, have a food product that they offer. And depending on, uh, you can start creating these type of products and, and testing the market out immediately with your own family, friends, and your immediate circles to see what is best. And you can start that way. And then the question is, do you offer information about creating and running nonprofits? Uh, we can help guide you in certain aspects of that process. We don't, we're not an authority. We focus mostly on for-profits. We've had a few nonprofits go through our programs. And there's lots of online uh, websites that we can research, uh, take you to, but if you'd like, write me an email. I'd be happy to send you some information on that as well, where to get started. Because when I started, I, did, I really, that was my question. How do I get started when, I, when we created uh, Central Community Partners? That's a nonprofit. Other questions? Okay. Yeah, I have another question. So um, through the app, I've, I've seen sort of the, uh, the initial business plan. How can you help individuals sort of move forward into like a second or third draft or the business plan? What is that process like? Okay. Yeah, thank you. And I also wanted, someone's asking for our email. You want to, might have turned back to uh, a couple slides and here we go here's the contact information so your question is what happens with the second and third iteration of the business plan right correct okay usually the the first step is the hardest get a business plan by by going through the app once you have your initial business plan you have to go through another series of questions that well we what we've created is those questions are in the workbook and that will help you strengthen and help you redefine some of the areas in your business model. Oh, you maybe, maybe you thought it was this, maybe it's actually this. And it, it'll test all the assumptions that you have created regarding your business the first time around. Then the workbook will help you strengthen the second time around. The third time is you're having someone, you're sending that second draft and having someone else read it. And they'll give you feedback going, what do you mean by this? Or are you sure about that? Or, oh, that's really good. And so you'll start having this feedback loop with your immediate people that could read your business plan and provide you some additional feedback. By that time, you're, you're on your third draft. And that's when it really starts becoming reality. Maybe this is really going to start taking off because you're starting to test out your service or your product in the marketplace. What parts of the business plans do funders view most critically and what are the main problems in early plans? The most important part the you know, business plan is going to be your projected, but your financials of your current situation and your projected financials. That is the most any funder is going to look at that. They're going to see, they're going to ask you, why do you think your sales are projected to be X over the next few months and over the course of the year? What's driving your sales? What are going to be some of the risks or issues and challenges that you're facing to get to those sales to those sales goals? What's going to prevent you from reaching that? That's usually what they're most concerned with. Then it's uh, the soundness of the business model. Usually the numbers are tied back to the business model, so they work in balance and in tandem. And they have to be balanced. It has to be uh, a business model, a business offering, any kind of product or service offering that really makes sense for the marketplace. And that they, they believe in you, that, they're, that your capability is able to deliver if you're looking for some initial funding. The other part of the question, oh, and Naldo has something to add to that. Hang on. Hey, just to, just to build onto that, um, there's, there's a principle that we use oftentimes in our workshops, um, and there's a book that's, that's been written around it. It's called The Lean Startup by Eric Ries. And, and that, I think, addresses a lot of, some of, a lot of these concerns. Um, so getting early profits, um, address early problems, uh, or addressing the main problems early, um, finding ways that you can test your, your business, a new idea, um, easily, quickly, um, 
and cheaply, it's, it really makes a big difference. Um, the name of the book is called The Lean Startup, and it's by Eric Reese. Um, and, and so we use that a lot in our, in our workshops and with our entrepreneurs. And actually, it's, a lot of it is ingrained in, in what we do in, in, our, in the app as well. Um, so encouraging you to test, test early and test quick and test cheaply. Um, so we will have entrepreneurs um, sell to their friends, sell to their families, um, put up a web page with um, you know, asking for people to sign up for a wait list or get on a wait list for a new product just so that they can see if people are interested. Um, you know, how can you find a way to test the, the demand for your product or your service without having to develop it first is really important. And that, that helps you um, move forward without uh, reservation, without fears. Um, and, and that can be done quite quickly. And you can also start making money quite early with a, an earlier product. So, you want to address the Are you addressing those two questions on this side? How can you come, uh, overcome your fears and open your business? You can, you can build on to what I said. Okay, just building on what Nalda just said regarding how do you overcome fears of opening a business? This is probably the most greatest fear uh, that we see in the basic training. Um, being able to put yourself out there, sell your product and service that you created, and expose yourself to the criticism and feedback that your market has to uh, offer you. That is a process that takes step by step. So the first step is creating a, a plan of what you think could work. Two, creating a prototype of what you want to offer. Then preparing yourself for asking close friends and family feedback. But they're not always going to be totally honest with you because they don't want to hurt your feelings. But what you want to do is be able to expand beyond that and have friends of friends and then other people and then just in the general community. If you go to a farmer's market, it's a great way to test uh, a product or put yourself out there or any kind of sporting event and put yourself out there and hand out samples it, just to get people to see if, how, you, how you respond to them. That's the only way you're going to start learning, interacting with strangers, with people who are going to be able to, are like-minded to you that share the same values, which is why we do the values. And you're going to start seeing real positive feedback. And they're going to, because you're going to start aligning yourself with people that want to see you succeed and believe in you. So this is really important. So to find those people that are gonna adopt your product or service early on, that's, that's critical to the process of building a business. And also being able to um, understand where your fears and doubts actually come from. From uh, if there is a history of fear of failing, then you have to address that in, by other means. You have to be clear that failing is a part of entrepreneurship. You have to be okay with that. You're, you, it's not, you can't take it personal. You have to just be able to move on when you do fail, get, pick yourself back up and move on. It's a little by little and step by step. But you have to understand where those doubts come from, where they originally originated from, because you don't want that to impede your success and, and be in your power. That's what we always um, tell our entrepreneurs. Understand who you are and what you have to offer is super important in the world. And, and don't be afraid of it. Take it by control. The other point is, um, what is uh, the point do entrepreneurs start seeing profit? Really depends on, on what you're trying to sell. Some, some organizations, some products see profit earlier and within three to six months. Others take a year and a half to two years. So it really depends. So it's, some, it's good to take your time, understand your own personal financial position in order for you to take the next steps. So that's why once you do your personal financials on the app, then you can see what needs to be adjusted. How do I make more income? How do I reduce my spending? How do I save money? Do I have bad credit? How do I address that? So it's going to make you look at that. And the more you look at that with clear eyes and you have a plan to address those issues, you're going to overcome much quicker and you're going to move things that might prevent you from being successful out of the way and your success will come a lot earlier. But it's good to address that. 
you got the name of the book and someone said, okay, good. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Thank you. I think we're out of time, but thank you so much, Arturo and Aldo. Greatly appreciate all those great words of wisdom. Um, I highly encourage all of you to really um, um, take a look at the website at Center Community Partners. They have lots of wonderful resources um, that will help any entrepreneur at any stage of your journey. So I want to thank all of you who were able to join us today. Um, again, feel free to send us an email, any one of us, if you have any other lingering questions. Um, and lastly, I will send again the link um, to to the recording of this webinar as well as the previous ones please please be on the lookout for our immigrants rising website that will be launching on friday again thank you so much and i will see you next time bye bye everyone bye thank you very bye. much bye 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 arturo